And my brothers and amen again. We're just so excited and delighted to be able to come before you and talk about a topic this morning that I'm just totally, totally over the moon about. And that's decisiveness. You know, in life, it's all about being decisive. And that indecisive person is the individual that kind of destroys or, or ruins or messes up the uh, the way things are are going and moving forward. So just wanted to just get this uh, this morning started. And uh, let me get my picture up here. Where'd you go? Um, God is, is good. He's, uh, I always like to say that he's better than gingerbread cake. And when we look at our lives, we find that there's so many things that we that we enjoy and like. You know, as we were building out and for the last 10 years have been working on building this network, this, this collaboration of men that come together every Tuesday and Thursday morning with the express purpose of sharing in a safe place to be able to pray and hear a decisive word that's going to strengthen, empower, encourage, and allow us to employ and execute these principles so that we can become better men. And the full, the full scope of it, the reason we're here every Tuesday and Thursday and throughout the week is because we want men to become better. We want them to become the better version of themselves. And in order for that to happen, the word tells us that we have to renew our minds, that our minds are in a, a dark place, a, an incomplete place, an inconspicuous place. So when we look at the renewal of our mind, we say, what does that encompass? What does that look like? What does it mean to actually renew your mind, to make it better, to reset, to have a mindset reset? And of course, that's a great question, and I'm glad you asked. So as we're looking into that question, we realize that there are four fundamental core values or attributes or characteristics that, man, that God is looking for and searching for in a better man, in a born again, in a maximized man. And those four characteristics, and we want to give a... Uh, give, uh, Give a give our authority or give, or give recognition to um to Benny Franklin, the president of the National Men's Spirit Call, because he sat down and he defined these four core values as we were looking to expand our platform and become all that God has declared and desired and designed for us to be. And those four characteristics that uh, that Benny was able to enumerate into and to just to list out are number one. Uh, is maturity. And last month, we unpacked maturity. We brought brothers in. And just let me parenthetically uh, indicate that we are blessed beyond measure. This this uh, this group, this collaboration of, of gentlemen has come together and been together for the last 10 years. This is going into our 11th season of coming together. And God has just, has got, just got such a great sense of humor and way of doing things. So now we find ourselves with some incredible talent. When you look at um, Sir Derek Pastor, Sir Derek Raphael, probably one of the most brilliant graphic designers on the planet. When you look at somebody like a Benny Franklin, a, a high level uh, corporate uh, manager that is able to have access to to coaching and, and uh, information at such a high level, and then he disseminates it to us so that we can grow. People like, I mean, the list goes on and on. We have attracted gentlemen that are willing to invest their time, their talent, and treasure to make sure that this platform reaches you and, uh, and is able to help you to become that better version, that better man. So let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is maturity, and the um, the underlying sub theme is uh, that um, seeking guidance from God in decision making. Making, you know, every morning that a man wakes up, before he walks out that door, he's confronted with a plethora of problems and so many decisions, so many options, so many choices that it makes him feel overwhelmed. It makes him feel like he wants to shrink back and, and hide because decision-making at the very core, at the foundation level of decision-making is trust. You've got to trust 
the person that you're making the decision in, uh, for. You got to trust yourself that you're doing the right thing. You've got to trust God that he has employed everything necessary for you to come out victorious. And that trust, so most of us, or many people, especially men, are reluctant to step out and make a decision. Making a decision means that you're now going to be put under scrutiny. You're going to be put under, uh, not under attack, but under scrutiny where people are going to look at you and judge that decision or the, uh, the choice that you made. When you look at uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, and uh, starting at verses five and six, it says this, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path so those directed paths are why we need to depend on the guidance of god to take us to the place where he wants us to be you know interestingly when you read scripture from genesis to revelation it is a it's a it's a, a culmination of the plan of god for you to live a, a victorious life a life where you have uh, success, a life where you have significance, a life where people are depending on you. But as Rupert Kipling said, when all men depend on you, but none too much, you can trust in the fact that God is going to open doors and, and do what is necessary. So as we move forward, we need to acknowledge God's sovereignty because when uh, a sovereign God is able to uh, to do certain things, a sovereign God uh, positions himself to be able to make decisions on your behalf. So when you opt in and make choices yourself, that act of decisiveness is probably perhaps one of the most crucial things that we as Christians can do. We have choices. We have options. We can make decisions that either take us closer to our vision or, sadly, that can pull us away from that vision, that will put us in a, into a, a valley of, of, of despair and doubt because we are not living out what God has planned for us to do. And that means the decisiveness, the ability to make a decision and to stick with it because you made that decision with intentionality and with clarity. So let's talk about those two extremes, intentionality and clarity. To be intentional about something means that you did it on purpose, that you meant to do it. If I, When Will Smith slapped uh, uh, Chris uh, Tucker, he was intentional about that. He meant to do it. He stepped up on stage, reared back, and slapped him. That was intentional. So when we're intentional about our decisions, that positions us so that everything that we're doing, we're doing strategically. There's a strategy in mind. There's steps in mind. We're doing them because we're believing that the end result is going to be favorable to us. So that's why decisiveness becomes such a crucial part of the makeup of man. We have maturity, which we discussed last month. This whole month, our theme is decisiveness. And every week, we're going to unpack a different aspect of it. Then to round, round out November and December, we have consistency and strength. And both of those are topics that are, that are incredible. You know, Benny, when he uh, began to pin and, and create this, um, these four core values, he, he shared that not only is, uh, are these the four values that God is looking for in a man, but he's, he says that um, they're also the characteristics that females are looking for in a man that a that a, a mate or a partner is looking for in a male in a man. So as we operate in manhood, as we become gooder and gooder, better and better, we need to figure out how to hear the voice of God. You know, when you consider the word purpose, and I, I, I seem to be bouncing, but I've got one particular core understanding that I want to impart to you this morning. When you consider that, that word decisiveness and you make that decision to go, to, to go this way or to go that way, that decision affects not only you, but it affects your family. It affects your community, perhaps your church, perhaps your country. It could even uh, affect the world. And often we make decisions not understanding their far-reaching impact. So we just get up and we do things and we, we don't see God's guidance on it. You know, 
It gets to the point when, when a man that's completely surrendered and sold out to God, he's going to seek God's uh, advice, God's direction, God's decision on everything he does. And we're going to talk in a moment about how to hear the voice of God through scripture and through just the fact that he sends people and things in our path to deliver his word. But as, as, we're, as we're looking into how to hear the voice of God so that we can begin to make those decisions, that we can begin to seek from God. Let me just go back um, and, and look in scripture and talk about some of the giants out of scripture and how they found themselves in a position where they had to make decisions. They had to engage in decisiveness and yet they were fearful, yet they were afraid, yet they put pause and put them pump their brakes because they were reluctant to march into the crucible of time and make decisions that will affect all those people. Because now that decision is now uh, subject to the scrutiny and the critique and the criticism of those that are around them, those that make that make a difference in your life and those that don't even matter, but they've got an opinion of what you've done, the decision that you've made. So you want to make sure that your decision is sound. You want to make sure that your decision is going to push you forward toward the goal, the dream, the, the point that you want to reach. And sadly, when you make that decision, all around, we are confronted with people that are just going to let their laugh, their ridicule. They will look at that decision and say, that's the dumbest thing anybody could possibly do. And you're saying, wow. I don't want to experience that type of uh, of life ever again. I don't want to, to wake up and have people criticizing what I say, criticizing what I do, critiquing everything that, that's about me, making judgments and condemning me. So rather than face that, I will not make a decision. So you begin to, to, to dial back on any decision-making activity and you find yourself not listening to God. You find yourself making decisions that you think are the best for you and your family when in essence, they are putting you deeper into a hole. Let me just share this parenthetically. Not making a decision is perhaps the worst decision that you can make because by not making a decision, you have the option in making that decision, you have the option of going one way or the other. When you choose not to do something, you're going to go one way, even though you chose not to do it because your inaction is what causes the, uh, the situation to escalate. So what are some ways that we can actually get into um, uh hearing what God is saying, hearing the voice of God, so that we can listen long enough, we can listen well enough, where we are actually getting the input from uh, the divine source, from, from directly from God, or from God's source, uh, either the word, or um, his, uh, his warrior, a, a pastor, teacher, one of the, the gifts that he gives to the body, that we receive a word, we receive information, we receive clarity. So we say, based on this, this is my next move. I'm being decisive. I have made a decision that I'm going to go in. So we have to first acknowledge God's sovereignty. Next, we have to have clear communication to ourselves, to those around us, and have clarity about what we're deciding on. If clarity doesn't exist, then there's confusion. And confusion will cause you to back up and to, and, to, and to choose not to make a choice, to choose not to decide, because this confusion is not clarity. With clarity, you walk in and you're clear about what the next step should be and could be. With clarity, you walk in and you understand that each action is going to cause a specific result. So with clarity, you can walk in with confidence. With clarity, you can walk in with courage. With clarity, you can walk in with candor and make that decision, express that vision, and and do what you do, regardless of the fact that you may get pushback, regardless of the fact that you may get um, uh, criticism and critique, feedback. And sometimes, as uh, as been, I, I don't know why I just uh, just focused on uh, Mr. Franklin this morning because he's he's got some wisdom. And if you have the opportunity to be able to sit down with him for any length of time, he will share that uh, that uh, that wisdom that he's gained over the years with you. But Benny, you know, basically always is, is telling us that we need to be focused on the end result. And that, that if, you, if what you do now is not 
focused on getting you to where you want to be, why are you doing it? Often decisions that we make are made uh, this out of muscle memory. They're made out of this uh, without thought, without intentionality, without any focus whatsoever. So that clear communication, that being intentional is what will lead us to the victory that we're seeking. I think that most importantly, the way to hear from God and to be, be clear that we've heard from him is that we study scripture. Uh, scriptural study, Bible study, just getting into the word, digging deep into the word so that we understand what God is saying. Now, when we study scripture and we begin to unpack it and, 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 uh, and, and just line it up, align it next to what our, our issue is that we need to make a decision on, the clarity becomes uh, apparent. The clarity opens up. And so now we're able to make that decision based on proper information, based on correct information. Um, proper prior planning produces perfect results. And so, you know, they say that practice makes perfect. The truth is that practice makes permanent. But if we want to make it perfect, if we want to make it better, if we want to become better men, then we need to engage in this principle of decisiveness. And even more so, we need to engage in it from the standpoint that we look at what the word is telling us, what we understand, and operate from that position to be able to reach the goal that we're looking for. Then we need to seek wise counsel. You know, seeking wise counsel means that, um, you know, I like the fact that, um, in his accomplishment, uh, Pastor Sir Derek Raphael is probably one of the most brilliant people in his, in his arena that you're going to find out there. But he still defers to the fact that he's not the sharpest person in the room. And when you get to be the sharpest person, the sharpest tool in the shed, you're going to find yourself getting dull real quick. I want to put a position and surround myself with people that are smarter than I am, that are that are, have more experience and expertise than I than I do, so that I can get better, that I can get good. Because I'm going to tell you this: it, as good as you are, there's always a way that you can become better. You know, doubt and fear will derail a, de uh, a decision more than anything. So when we are we're confronted with doubt and fear, we want to get better, but the doubt is we're not good enough. The doubt is that we that we need more, that we need to that we have to pay our dues, that we have to become better. When you look at um at uh at uh the, the thing that's kind of captivated the American mindset right now, and that's the Dion effect. He tell he says, What makes you think that I care? about your opinion of me. He said, because your opinion of me is not my opinion of me, but we get so caught up. And let's be honest, brothers. One of the reasons we're on here is because we want to band together and get stronger and gain the strength from each other. When we, when, when we look at reality, reality tells us, hey, you're not good enough. Reality tells us he's better than you. Reality tells us so many things. So we purpose our decisions. We base our decisions based on that reality that we're having to deal with. So listen, guys, doubt and fear is a part of that reality. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is, is all the things that are holding us back. Everything that we're, we're hoping to achieve and receive is on that other side of fear. What do we want? You know, clarity on exactly what we want will lead to decisiveness. When you know what you want and you really want it, Dion says, I want to win. I want to win bad enough where I may, I'm willing to step into the arena and knowing that if I step into the arena, I'm going to be criticized. Knowing that if I jump in this arena, I'm going to be talked about. I'm going to be ridiculed. I'm going to be laughed at. I'm going to be cheated on. I'm going to be... Um, conspired against. All these things are, are the result of stepping into the arena, making the decision to do this thing. So every decision has within it the, the opportunity to bring the vision into full clarity, but every decision has the ability to pummel you and knock you down to the depths of despair. So because of that, most people let doubt and fear stop them from moving forward in the decision, moving forward in the option to do better in life. You know, in Proverbs 3, uh, 5 and 6, where it talked about leaning not on your own understanding, but instead uh, giving yourself into the understanding of God, leaning to God's guidance. When we do that, we're able to open up doors. When we do that, doubt and fear, listen, doubt and fear are real. They're in our life. 
Every man is confronted with doubt. Every man has fears. But the key to success, the key to winning in life is to proceed even in spite of those fears, to proceed and use that doubt and that fear as the fuel to be able to charge our engine up so that we can go forward and go through that wall, go through the thing that couldn't be done. You know, there's a poem that said, somebody said it couldn't be done, but he, with a chuckle, replied that maybe it would, couldn't, but he'd be one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled down with the trace of a grin. If he worried, he hit it as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it and that's because he was willing to make that make a decision when you make a decision there's the opportunity to make a mistake when you make a mistake you know what Dion what Dion taught us this week about making about losing he you know everything is easy to win when he was winning he was beating his chest everybody was saying how awesome he was and he wasn't really beating his chest out of braggadociousness he was just saying we here we coming i'm confident i'm clear i'm i'm, I'm courageous I'm, i have the candor to open my mouth and say exactly what needs to be said without fear because i am a man putting my pants on one leg at a time just like any of y'all so he says i'm not i ain't scared i ain't hard to find but he knew exactly what he was looking for. As he won, each win pushed him further and further up so that he became the national narrative. But that loss, that loss to Oregon, and then that loss to USC, they were humbling moments, but they were moments that allowed him to recalibrate and say, this decision was sound. We're moving forward. We're moving onward anyway. How you express yourself in loss is just as important as how you don't get, you remain humble in winning. And he's taught us how to lose well so that we can reposition ourselves to win. And that decision, that decisiveness is based on that same principle. If you look at the possibility of loss, but you're hoping for the potential of winning, you move yourself forward. And the strategy becomes that you operate from a position of decisiveness. Hey, I give this back over to you.